I'm Dr. Sunil. Um, basically, I intervention in pulmonology at Astra CMI Hospital. And today is the agenda for the talk is smoking cessation. Friends, smoking is one of the major risk factors of most of the catastrophic what we're being tackling in our respiratory issues. Most commonly, we have a COPD, nothing but last but not the least, lung cancer, which is always a major threat for the population. Because when you see that mortality, the world leading cause for mortality of any sort of a cancer is lung cancer. So that gives us a humongous amount of uh, responsibility in terms of how to tackle this thing such that we can save our future generation away from getting in this sort of a, a catastrophic disease. Now, when it comes to a lung functioning test, actually, this pyrometer is one such sort of a small device which can track somebody's lung function. But it was very much alarming to see as compared to Western population and a US population, somebody who was born in India, they have 30% reduction in lung functioning capacity as compared to Western US. So born in India, we are always at the disadvantage that our, we have a lung function less than 30% compared to normals. On top of that, the amount of pollution, amount of uh, dust, what we get exposed to day-to-day -day activity, that also have a strong bearing on our lung functioning capacity. At the same time, the smoke is one of the major silent killer actually, unless and until we get into the mode where we try to comprehensively address the ill effects of smoking, it's going to be a major challenge in the future to come by. So it's our responsibility to take into how we curtail the smoking habit so that we have a primary prevention at the go. So if this is a uh, sort of an interaction session what we're trying to conduct from Astra CMI Hospital, basically to help out somebody who is really in the verge of quitting smoking. Now the thing is, if somebody wants to consciously make an attempt, uh, attempt to quit smoking, only 3% of people will be there successful on the board. So literally it's a combination of pharmacotherapy, counseling, will take our yield to the tune of more than 70% will be successful in terms of attaining that successful quit smoking. Without that, I think probably the whole cycle of smoking session and trying to get a control on the COPD part and your lung cancer will always be a major challenge. Now at the same time, when it comes to our lung physiology, now daily in and out, we are just being exposed to more than 10,000 liters of air in and out which are us of the lungs. Unfortunately, we are not lucky that we will not be getting a pure oxygen in our day-to-day -day activity. It will be the smoke, dust which are part and parcel of our lungs. Uh, day to day things, we are left with no option just to go with this. So, in view of that, why can't we make one extra additional support or uh, step towards quit smoking so that which can be have a better future in, to follow? Now, I think we started having some questions actually. Uh, we have Asha Dizalva mentioning that does nicotine gum help people quit smoking? Yeah, definitely. Who has a role actually? Now, when it comes to your smoking habit, like we take an arbitrary level of nicotine level which is already set in the body now we can't quit one shot like that because there is always a chance of adverse effects which can be a major that like your increased anxiety increased uh, sweating or tremors all these things to curtail this there is a minimum amount of a nicotine push which has to be given where these gums patches lozenges comes up in handy in terms of cutting that some sort of an adverse effect which can be a major Thing so that we can be one of the major hurdles for a quit smoking. Okay. Then how can I quit smoking? So yeah, first, if you have a strong motivation to quit smoke, I think your 50% of your job is done. When it comes to statistics, more than 70% of people are willing to quit. Unfortunately, they come up with a chance thing that they try their own self, but unfortunately, the success rate is only 3%. So that needs a proper discussion among the smoking quitting, what are the ill effects, what are the benefits and what are the success rate what we get. Now, if somebody stops smoking at the early part of their age, early part probably the smoking can be picked up at the teenagers actually. So, know that earlier the quit smoking is always a benefit because it will take nearly 15 years from the quit smoking to the completely stagnated smoking after 15 years will be in a position to pull back your lung function towards normal. So, immediately when you stop smoking within 24 hours, we have some changes, physiological changes, which can be of a benefit. Now, when it comes to your overall mortality because of any sort of a cardiovascular or any sort of a stroke related complications or any peripheral vascular disease connected to smoking, it will take minimum good 15 years for you to come back to normalcy. So, 
quit is a word i think probably to be gone at the earliest so that we have all this sort of a good things to back up in the future yeah when it comes to quit smoking yeah strong will power and a proper counseling in terms of how to curtail it for that we have one sort of an objective but whatever discussion then actually we need to know that what is the nicotine dependency levels that we have a short uh, list of uh, things actually where we have the numbers anything less than 5 we have a good control where we counseling itself can be a good uh, boon for that in terms of getting out and when it comes to a number of ftnd this is a ferguson's uh, tobacco nicotine dependency scores actually anything more than 5 needs a proper nicotine replacement therapy with a behavioral therapy also adding on to that with that of a pharmacotherapy which can be very handy in that yeah any job vacancy in psc star department are you in cmi i think probably i think you have to run to a hr department which i think they can help you out in terms of uh, getting a job opportunity or that can i help we yeah, are definitely we can help out uh, in terms of uh, getting uh, smoking uh, quit at the earliest so that we have all sort of a good works a good uh, sort of an uh, uh, overall outcomes can be achieved at the earliest now when it comes to your uh, quit smoking actually like yeah when somebody you know, always a frequently most asked question is whether should we stop the smoking at one go or gradually you can decrease the number if somebody is looking at 10 cigarettes is it a wise to come down to a 5 4 3 2 1 as compared to suddenly abrupt stop now the there's a humongous amount of literature which has been poured in so that one stop at a go is always much much more beneficial and also the success of quit smoking will be higher when you stop smoking at one go rather than gradually decreasing now what is that uh, analogy for this when somebody if you talk if you are smoking 10 cigarettes if you have a nicotine level fixed at a 10 10 units per ml if that is sort of a nicotine levels now 5 is a threshold where you will not have any sort of an adverse effect so you always want to smoke instead that you need to go, go your nicotine level more than 5 to 10 but unfortunately if you start gradually decreasing from 10 to 8 6 5 4 once you are there with 5 then you are starting with the cravings then invariably you have a tendency to go with increasing smoking because you to compensate for that you cannot go on the number so what you do you spend at least one cigarette when you smoke for 5 minutes if that is a 10 numbers with 5 minutes per cigarette now if you are coming down to the numbers to 5 invariably is double the duration of smoke what you are going to spend you take a deep breath so that your nicotine level will be pushed to more than 5 so that you will not have this sort of adverse effect so always the best would be to stop at one go rather than gradually reducing one by one because invariably you try to compensate by doing this sort of a deep smoke so that invariably your nicotine level reaches to the level where you don't come like dropping on your numbers will always have a good success yeah i have a mudrika mentioning about hi doctor i don't smoke but my friends do when i'm with them how will that efficient affect my health definitely not only the primary smoker the second secondary smoker or second hand smoker is also equally threat actually when it comes to pregnancy also this is a major challenge husband should start smoking if husband or uh, wife is a passive smoker invariably we talk about the growth in the intrauterine period there is a humongous of data justifying that you know, how much is the active intermittent active smoking at the same time not to that level but still there is a considerable amount of risk factor for second hand smoking so at this level of intrauterine growth duration is also one more challenge actually which i think probably taking up this thing in a very concrete uh, way we can just curtail the second hand smoking also which is also a equal importance so the bottom line is smoking quit smoking at the earliest so that we have a good overall outcomes now when somebody quit make up a mind to quit smoking it's not only the quit smoking how to maintain it is also a major major challenge when it comes to uh, quit smoking when it comes to pharmacotherapy we have a first things and second end there are certain nicotine replacement and uh, some which have antipsychotic like uh, effects like your bupropion is also one such sort of molecule and the new kid on the block vernacular this is one such sort of a molecule which i always love to just prescribe most of the patient because it not only decreases the chance of you developing any sort of a craving towards nicotine but also the the whatever the benefits what you get from nicotine try to some extent 
mask on this and so that we have a good results when it comes to your know, vernacular. Now, vernacular is one such sort of a molecule. There's a tremendous amount of data coming up with the success rate. Definitely, there's a good data which is back. Initially, we had skepticism whether it can precipitate a suicidal tendency or depression. It has been strongly, strongly supported that there's no such sort of a major adverse effect when you start using a vernacular. Only thing is that you need to go a stepwise manner where initially you need to start with a 0.5 mg once in a day for three days. Then 0.5 mg once in the morning and night for another three more days. Then comes 1 mg once in the morning and night for 12 weeks. Now this is what some sort of a thing which has to go through as a physician, as a supporting team. I need to be very much supportive in terms of how you get to the 12 weeks so that the key for success to the whole thing will be determined. Now Chakravarti uh, comes to the question that in market there are available e-cigarettes. How is it useful instead of real cigarettes? Unfortunately, the e-cigarettes, initially we came up with a boom saying that the smoking habit can be cut to the maximum. Unfortunately, that's not the case, my friends. Literally, e-cigarettes is not as harmful as your cigarettes. It has also has n number of ingredients which have in sort of a carcinogenic predisposition. Invariably, that is also equally, but it's some sort of a pseudo where you always feel that e-cigarettes must save up, but unfortunately, that's not the case. So, Quit smoking always go out completely out with saying that zero means zero, nothing as a substitute for that, which I think can be a major uh, success in terms of taking completely away. This e-cigarettes has always a major, major thing actually where there's always a form of Now, when it comes to any quit smoking, I always have this sort of a, you need to have this sort of a leadership quality in you in terms of motivating people to take up this quit smoking at the RPA so that they don't have to land back on any sort of a Markets which is found strongly driven by companies which propagate uh, tobacco as compared to very less, which has been given an importance to curtail this habit. Now that needs a strong motivation where take a society to the brighter future by picking up this sort of a quit smoking activity. Uh, Rame comes with a question. I smoke once in two months. Still. Uh, I think I have an effect on my head. Yeah, now smoke is no one. How numbers? I think there's no any strict definition which is good or which are bad. Now I'll give you one sort of an example where each and every cigarette is smoke. Nearly more than six thousand toxic substances gets in, including your toilet cleaner or any sort of a lithium batteries. All sort of a chemicals are being bombarded into your airways. Now the uh, airways are only strictly meant for oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen. But unfortunately, with the smoking habit, more than 6,000 nearly toxic substances getting in, literally that can have a long repercussion in terms of, but born in India, first of all, there's a drop in 30% of your lung function. On top of the smoke, dust, pollution, on top of the smoking habit, literally, really, we have a tough time unless until we have a strong drilled motivation to stop the smoking at the so that we have a better quality of life in the future. And then one more question comes from Mohan who all asked that, should I quit all at once or should I quit slowly? Just friend, I just given an elaborate explanation. Always quit at once is always a better modality to adapt a quit smoking rather than gradually cutting down. Only thing is that if your adverse effects like your secondary adverse effects are much more than that has to be properly counseled. It all depends on the number of cigarettes what you smoke. Early morning when you get up, what is that the time that you spend before you take your first cigarette. If less than five minutes, I think that definitely needs a strong motivation in terms of counseling so that we have a good success of quitting smoking without getting into adverse effect, which can be a scary thing, which can be a nightmare when somebody having a quit smoking and developing adverse effect, which has not been comprehensively addressed, that fear factor which will always hamper the success of quit smoking. Now, why does one cough more of a quitting smoking? Nothing but if whenever we have this sort of a smoking habit, invariably there's a composite stuff in our body, we'll try to take out all the bad things what are there compiling in the lungs and try to throw it out. Once you stop smoking, this process will take more aggressively. So invariably that whatever the inflammation which has been set by because of the hot smoke and the toxic chemicals, body has a composite for that by trying to push out all this whatever the bad thing which is there. It takes in terms of the yeah, bronchitis which sets in, that takes a couple of weeks for it to regenerate the whole epithelium. So minimum three to four weeks, invariably you have this sort of a smoker's cough. Once you stop smoking, you will take two to three weeks for you to completely get rid of this smoking. Yeah, I think there's always a smart and uh, yeah, welcoming message coming up. 
Piyush Shukla who always uh, will actually will support that uh, he is going to start smoking soon. That I think probably was a wrong sort of a message which is running on through the society where no way we have any sort of a good, not even one single literature which is well. Now, one thing is something sort of a behavioral science which needs to be deeply involved with because if you start your uh, legacy of how the smoking came up in the picture, now 1953, a surgeon came up with a paper that is smoking causing lung cancer. But unfortunately, people have not been having that sort of a strong mindset to take up this habit. It's because something, a strong motivation is needed to know what are the goods and what are the bads. Once you get in, because in our OPD, was somebody with a COPD who is more than 40 to 50 years here, it comes to OPD with the oxygen support, where he is not able to get the luxury to go for a vacation with the family to a trekking or any sort of a high yield. That is really disappointing your friends. Because now life is one, we have only one sort of a game with one innings. Unfortunately, we are not playing a test match where we have a, uh, two innings to play by, we have one innings. How safe we wear that so that we have a good result is the one thing which has to be dealt with. Now, what precautions can one take while he or she is in time to quit? Now, quit, it all depends on the number of cigarettes, how, you, how many numbers of cigarettes. So that when you come down on the cigarette, whether what sort of a healer, that needs a good counseling. If somebody has more than 10 to 14 or 10 to 20 cigarettes per day, in that context, actually probably the nicotinic patch or gums comes up handy. But unfortunately, the oral ulcers, the patch, the local uh, discoloration, or some sort of irritation, these are the local signs, these are small, small complications. What we generally encounter when it comes to nicotine patch and gums. And uh, the success rate also goes up to 60 to 70 percent. And that with a positive reinforcement in terms of motivating them to quit, what are the benefits? And at the same time, how to tackle the adverse effect. Now, distraction therapy is also one more thing which has been very strongly advocated, where somebody has a strong urge to smoke. You've done a good work in terms of motivating them to quit smoking, started to replace with nicotine gums or patches, whichever is applicable based on your discussion. And then subsequently, now the adverse effects. How you need to distract when somebody is very close to, like your friends, to take them for a call for a movie or to engage them in some sort of a dialogues where they focus on some other interesting activity, like in a, if you're good in sports, try to motivate in sports when they have a sort of a craving towards taking a smoke. Now, craving, if you go over to literature, seven to two hours after quitting, there's a one strong urge for cravings which generate tend to start. So initially, once you stop, after 48 to 72 hours is the crucial thing, which will determine the success, how you take away this initial hurdle. So how you tackle in terms of proper counseling and the ill efforts or adverse efforts managed, managed in a very comprehensive way will determine the success of our quit smoking. Now, will weight training help to quit smoking? Now, weight training is by itself is one more specialty when somebody stops smoking. Invariably, the nicotine, which is one of the molecules, which will uh, introduce a more of a catabolic stuff, where usually there will be drop in your uh, body weight. But uh, when it comes to quit smoking, there's always a tendency that there will be small 12-10% rise in your body weight, which comes with uh, whatever the good things, what is going to be recovered. At the same time, there are few people who come with me with the predominant constipation, the major, major uh, adverse effect once you stop smoking. Nicotine is one such sort of a molecule, which I think probably with the proper precaution in terms of good laxatives in the picture, can also help us to get away with this constipation without getting back into the smoking mode. One more question comes out, I'm trying to quit, but I still smoke occasionally. Is that okay? But my friend, I would sincerely suggest quit means quit. There's no second way altered for that by starting with a small dose. Now that needs a strong motivation and some sort of a discussion where you need to come to a dialogue where zero means zero. There's no any option. And I mean, sort of an alternate for that particular numbers. Which sport exercise helps the most to quit smoking? It's only that distraction where I think you need to be, see, when smoking is one sort of a behavioral habit, when you are alone, when it is in a, some sort of a social gathering, maybe for a fun or some sort of peer pressure, you always pick up this thing. Now, once it becomes a habit, quitting is also a challenge. That's why I think we have a good session in terms of how well successful you can just get this quit smoking going on. Now, what sort of a sport? We really need to a distraction where when you have that craving which comes up, which urges you to go for a smoking to compensate for that sort of an adverse effect, 
where you do distract means probably you go to the physical activity where you at least you go for any sort of a sport like your soccer or any sort of a basketball or a cricket where you just motivate yourself at least five to ten minutes of a physical activity in a group will always give you a good amount of social moral boost where you are in your secure group which can take care of you in terms of your interaction and take you away from this sort of a craving towards smoke now the smoking cessation the ill effects not only the lungs is not a only primary organ the peripheral vascular disease where the atherosclerosis no doubt in patient generally understanding is that your heart attack are most common third and fourth decades on but unfortunately in our day-to-day -day we are seeing as young as 20 to 25 years people developing this heart attack the most common if you go back to the risk factors smoking is one of the major major risk factors on top of your sedentary lifestyle when somebody i talk a dialogue with your inter any sort of uh, it professional guys they're happily happy to spend up a couple of bucks on to our lab investigation triggering them for a red flag to say that you are normal or abnormal but friends i take my words healthy habits which is the one thing key to success getting up early sleeping at early so that we have a good quality six to eight hours of sleep and when you get up do train up yourself with a good physical activity by at least 45 to minutes to at least 30 minutes to 45 minutes of a regular job or physical activity eating a gym is always a good habit take a good healthy healthy diet actually there's no any stress beyond this because amount of distraction what we have in terms of taking gents and handicap and all sort of a complication diet physical activity keep your modest weight that is our key to the success on top of that don't pick up a habit of smoking if at all if you have a heart pick up a habit of smoking quit at the earliest so that that will start troubling you in the future why does uh, smoking lead to black knuckle of lips how can we cure now this all the high effects because of smoke because of their local allergic reactions also on top of that a hot smoke which generally turn to burn up your sensitive parts of your uh, body now quit smoking just to apply some sort of a creams will not give a good result quit smoking itself will take some time for you to completely get rid of this particular scarring whatever or a rashes what you develop on your lips maximum how many days can i take for one to quit smoking it all depends on a strong motive how you are driven to quit smoking now num the days are only the numbers actually if you're strongly uh, motivated you can just stop at one go so that we don't have to work about what is the duration there's no specific set goal line but when it comes to a nicotine replacement therapy or any sort of a supplement to quit smoking general world recommendation is minimum of 10 to 12 weeks is what the recommendation based on your comfort level we go to taper on a subsequent visit now dependence comes with the second hand smoke just as bad as actual smoking especially for pregnant women yeah second home it may not be so strong if i give a comparison smoking if it's 100 percent uh, harmful maybe 50 to 60 percent the success of a second hand smoking which is always bad to contribute to the ill effects now pregnant women yeah this is always a, a number of data has been poured in actually intrauterine growth retardation because of a nicotine content that's causing the vascular phenomena decrease your growth uh, potential that itself is one more thing actually which you generally encounter in a pregnant uh, women who are coming contact with the second hand smoke or by themselves if they start smoking then this pretty smoke was still both means to say intrauterine death is also one more dreaded complications of smoking which has been encountered so smoking even for a primary smoker or a second hand smoke is not a safe and that too with the pregnancy comes with a double edged sword where it can harm the kid also at the same time the pregnant person the smoking causes impotence yeah there is a humongous of literature which say that smoking also comes with this sort of a peripheral vascular disease where it is your peripheral blood circulation predisposed for all sort of a vascular pathology including your major major things like stroke your heart attack and also impotence also one more thing which is been very well documented so quitting i think this is one of the thing which everybody will be interested in to know this sort of a thing where quit smoking always you have a better life to enjoy away from this sort of a potency complication also now with this 21st generation 21st uh, century generation the major killer disease is stress invariably the targets what you set up in your it profession wherever with any sort of a corporate or any sort of a lifestyle you say everybody is chasing with some target setting invariably stress will be part and parcel Unfortunately, we don't have any sort of a parameter which can measure the stress level. So the bottom line is stress level is always a major. 
on top of the smoking people do uh, i do ask in uh, my day to day counseling actually so what is the sort of a motivation for them to smoke it can be a uh, strong peer pressure second as one of the moderate to decrease the stress but almost you nobody in a position to quantify how much is the level of stress reduction for them in the smoking but stress is the one thing on top of the smoking will always be having a lethal combination to at least for a good health in the future to come by now one more thing i just try to bring a notice on to your lung functioning capacity now 25 to 30 years is the age where we have a maximum lung function capacity now each and every year you pass by there is a drop in your lung function and that too i think probably we are exposed to this sort of a high level of smoke dust on top of smoking there will be a gradual decrease at the earlier so that maybe if you are not symptomatic by 8 years as normally what we generate to follow by having up a habit of not over 20 to 25 years by 40 to 45 years it will become symptomatic where you, your daily day activity start getting hampered and when it comes to really need to change yourself by going for a regular physical activity like running occasion once in a while you do there will be always a challenge again this sort of a daily day activity start getting hampered when you start really need to support yourself so ideally when you stop smoking at any age 15 years nearly take back to pull you back towards normal now lung cancer is one such sort of a thing where is also one more major major uh, thing which i think will be major risk factor is your smoking now asha disorder comes with the smoking cessation needs medical support or can someone do it alone yeah that's a good question actually now smoking alone quitting smoking by alone one's own motivation the success rate is which in the literature which has been tested where only the success rate only 3% which comes up means to say that you will be strongly motivated to quit unfortunately your adverse effect the trauma is the adverse effect which always be challenging unless until you are well acquired knowledge in terms of how you tackle this how comprehensively address this so that it will not hamper your key to the succession program will be a challenge so medical support is needed to at least in terms of behavior because something it's behavioral stuff when it comes to smoking that needs a proper understanding of what are the goods what are the, what are the ill effects of this quit smoking so that you can have an understanding we put out this in adverse effect that has to be discussed on table basically so that you can comprehensively address this so medical support in terms of both counseling and the pharmacotherapy can decrease your quit smoking in a very successful way to the level of 7 to 80 percent of success rate of quit smoking with the medical support including a counseling with a strong motivation and the pharmacotherapy what we generally use as in the form of a nicotine replacement therapy or vernacular is a molecule molecule we generate and to use yeah at the outset i would like to thank all of you who has been actively participated in this discussion the gist is very loud and clear quit smoking there is no any numbers zero is a number what we are looking for actually and i think probably with the strong motivation where we need to develop a leadership quality in terms of quit smoking starting from the smoking as government has taken a good policy in terms of smoking ban in a public places which is a strong motive and that too we need to take a strong vote in terms of how to curtail in our peer groups so that we can set a role models in terms of quitting smoking so that we have a better futures to nurture thank you for the participation uh.